Welcome to Weekends with Simon Marnie on ABC Radio Sydney. Ah, uh, yes, welcome to the Weekend Show. Simon Marnie here with you. We've got January out of the way. Let's get into February, and in this morning, we're going to take to the waterways. Marco Bordieri will take us into the behind the scenes of the bull shark. I don't know, it's one of those creatures that instills fear in me. But in the Underwater Gazette, there's a photo of a tagging program in Sydney Harbour. Marco will tell us all about the bull shark. I'd like to be under the sea. See, I think I'd like to be under the sea with this particular creature. As you know, we join Marco Bordieri from the Viz Group. They're behind the Sydney Underwater Gazette or viz.org.au where from the comfort of your lounge room, you can go snorkelling amongst the waterways and we'll find out where are the best spots and what the conditions are like. But Marco, this animal creates just straight fear in me. Good morning, Simon. How are you? I'm very well. We're talking, of course, one of the three dangerous species of shark. Yeah, that's right. Um, this week we have some information on our Facebook page. Uh, it's about uh, the bull sharks. So we have three types of uh, sharks that are considered dangerous that come visiting Sydney. One is the white, which is often called the, the great white, but it's actually just the white, the tiger, and the bull sharks. And uh, while the the white and the tiger comes very occasionally when the water is a bit warmer, but usually they don't stay. The bull sharks are actually the guests of our arbor in uh, summertime. And they're, they're here, they can even go way upstream, can't they? Yeah, especially the bull sharks, they are looking for fresh water. So they may go inland up to Paramatta along the river, and uh, they're really looking for murky and fresh water. So they have been found everywhere. So this week, they, this week, for example, on Monday, the Department of Primary Industry that is running a program has caught with hooks and bait, has caught uh, three of them in the range of two hours. One was uh, off Palmain, so on the left side of the bridge. The other one was near Tarunga Zoo, and the other one was near Watson Bay. So all across the harbor, they've been um, caught. They get a tag. Actually, they got two tags. One is acoustic and goes in the belly, and that's uh, used when they go near a beach. There is a their sensor, and in the range of 500 meters, you can tell that that shark is coming near the beach, or the beach may be, may be close for that. And then there is another tag, which is a GPS and radio. It's uh, placed on the dorsal fin. And that emits the, the 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 position of the shark when it gets near the surface. And they and they they tag and release them so that they can then one have this one that shows if it enters the beach. But also we get to understand more about their migration. Yeah, there is a uh, on uh, on the Facebook page, the Sydney Underwater Gazette. There is also a nice video from the Department of Primary Industry that shows the tracking across ta- across the years and. Uh, you can see, for example, the white sharks. They've been tracking, tracked, traveling all over the place from uh, all around Australia to New Zealand. And uh, usually they may travel up to 10,000 kilometers for in one year. So the white really travels a lot. The bull sharks, a little bit less, they tend to go a little bit north and then come back to the harbor. So this is the season where that's the, the the reason why we have this post. The, 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 the season with the, sh- the bull sharks coming to the arbor goes between November and, and April. So the suggestion is in those months where they come into the arbor, uh, just stay close to the to the beach. Don't go exploring parts of the arbor you wouldn't do usually, and um, just uh, uh, you know stay in places where everybody goes. Be, besides being shark aware and not swimming at dusk and, uh, you know, murky waters. Stay away from the murky waters. What is the visibility like in the uh, in the waters this weekend, Marco? It's been varied. It depends. So, Oceanside has been a little bit of swell, so it was impacted by the swell with, um, you know, the, the motion of the water stealing some particles. So, Oceanside has been like eight, me- eight metres. Uh, inside the harbour has been actually very good because for the, for the harbour it's been like seven meters at Manly Cove, which is where the Manly Ferry arrives at Manly. And uh, actually, yesterday, one of our members, Chris, spotted the 
a turtle and a penguin oh. doing the same as snorkeling. <laughs> oh, turtle and penguin, much better than the massive blue bottles that have been around. Yeah, Oceanside, because of the north-easterly uh, wind, there's been many beaches from uh, Palm Beach uh, down to Maruba has been impacted by blue bottles. They are like um, sailing sailing boats because of the of this sail in the in the you know, outside the water. They get pushed by the wind. So yeah, it's, it's a few people has been uh, you know stung by by them, and uh, I mean. It's not dramas, but uh, still unpleasant. Uh, we're going to talk blue bottles next Sunday, I think, because it went off when we talked before. And tomorrow is probably the pick of the days for going underwater. Yeah, today the weather is going to be so and so. There's still a little bit of swell, so again, the, the, the swell is going to stir up some particles. So tomorrow is going to be better because the, there is less swell, there is no wind, and there is sunshine. So definitely I will go tomorrow for a swim. Uh, anywhere should be good. Well, look, we can find out more at the Sydney Underwater Gazette Facebook page. Marco Bordieri, have a good weekend. You too, Simon. Have a good one.